<clears throat> there we go. Oh my goodness. Stuart did a stupid pinned comment. Okay, three, two, one. And wait for the internet to catch up. All right, you ready? It says we're live. Tell us if we're live. <laughs> are we live? Are we live? Yeah, I'm live with you and I'm alive, but are we live? <laughs> there's, there's many different things here. Hello, greetings. <laughs> I am playing Stuart Foe today. Who are you playing? Uh, I guess I'm you. <laughs> <you're> down there. <laughs> wow, Kwana Cockney, you've got a really good beard overnight. My goodness. I know. It's a I, great uh, beard. I, mean, I, I thought you couldn't <laughs> grow a beard. Spent some time relaxing on Risa, you know. So. Although you went very grey for being so young. What was the choice behind growing a beard and then dying it all in the same night? That's a bold choice, Commander. <laughs> bold choice. Indeed. Uh, we've got a lot of bold choices to talk about today, actually, which is great. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> And of course, I've I've gone I've got a floofy captain. That's a really good. You've got that? like a Pike Peak thing going on, I, which I is know. nice. I did gre <laughs> I did grease in school, and I have the I have absolutely the hair for that mullet. Look. <laughs> you do. Yeah, it was a. Oh yeah. I was like I was like th okay, I couldn't remember lines, so I was like second tier background people. I was like in the front of the background, but I was in the background, and then they did a video of it. Super embarrassing. And the videographer kept finding me because I, I I tried the leather jacket. I had the hair. And other people just sort of turned up in, you know, because it was a school thing, just their school uniform. And I was, like, trying. And they kept going to me. And the, it was a, that's a tangent. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got, I've, got the hair, I've got the hair for grease. You do. You definitely do. You got to uh, try to put a put a uh, cosplay together that incorporates the greaser kind of, like, look. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Oh, God. It'd be kind of a, it'd be a fun costume to do, like, a TOS, but in, like, full leather. Ooh. But like, like ch change the fit, just like, or like, yeah, keep it open, but with like Velcro, like clever. Oh. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Please introduce yourself, not Kamano Cockings, who's down there. I am known these days as Starfleet Sohail, but you can find me on X or Twitter or whatever you call it as Starfleet Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just a, a Trekkie who loves uh, a lot. Actually, all of Star I love everything Star Trek. So I find something in everything that I love. Mm -hmm. But I'm not above, nothing's above critique, though. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. I'm not here to be blindly, blindly loving. Yeah. Oh, cool. I... Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Ooh, Sean, so hey. cool. we got a super chat. Because <laughs> I, I always say that you know those those you might want to love everything, but if you love everything, then and you, like you actually love everything, then there's no internal metric for quality because you're not judging anything, you're just loving everything. So you can't see a bad thing if you love everything, but you need to see the bad thing to appreciate the good thing. Because if you think Discovery Season One is as good as Picard Season Three, okay. But like the reaction, you know what I mean? Like you're losing out on the joy of one if you think the other one's as good, et cetera, et cetera. So I think contrast is important. Um, that's why we do reviews scene by scene because some scenes can be, like some moments can be like, and some can be, so I, th I find contrast quite important. Um, I do it quite a lot yeah. in my writing, um, like picking a, a, a line that like, oh, and my direct my actors, it can often be like, right, go really positive here and then just take it right down to the last line because it makes both feel more meaningful. Agreed. But yes. Do you want to be the super chat reader? I believe you were last time because I hate reading. So yes, read so it out. Sh Sean O'Sullivan says, "So hail, what crew member did Worf say hadn't met? He hadn't, hadn't met. met. Sorry, hadn't met. Worf say hadn't met. Oh, yeah. No, no. I should I should read better. Sorry. <laughs> right, do you know that one? <laughs> do you know the reference? <laughs> hmm. No, I don't know that one. Insurrection. Ah, Have you heard of Gilles I Sullivan? should know that. No, I've just got here. No. The <laughs> the, 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 the music for you idiots know all that english <laughs> literature and, and, and english 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 literature as well uh dear me so i'm gonna write a poll so you can tell us what we're talking about today and why so uh what do we really want legacy or starfleet academy so that's the, or, or the big anything. question Th those are the two headlines this is everything all the, yeah. all the shows but that's like yeah Right there yeah, that's our main event there. I love the thumbnail you put together. It's really good. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a bit of the like uh, today. It's the bit of the uh, if you could only have this, you know. I personally like to have an abundance mindset, but you know, sometimes it's good to play these experiments, like you know, uh, and see what see what people think. Uh, also, it's a big thing on Twitter. I feel like there's a lot of. Uh, folks who are uh, talking about this because it's two eras that everyone well there's three eras i think that 
there's two eras that everyone's excited about. One is definitely the 25th century. There's a lot of folks who grew up watching TNG, DS9, and Voyager who are really hoping for like a chance to see those characters and what they're up to now. I mean, we got a lot of that in Star Trek Picard, especially season three, as you know. But uh, there's a hope that with a new Star Trek series, Star Trek Legacy, which Terry Metalis and the same crew that did um, Star Trek Picard season three are are trying to get off the ground and greenlit or a show like it that's set in the 25th century are very much something that I think folks are wanting forever. People have been talking about a Starfleet Academy show as well. So people have been dying to get that as well. As far as the time, we already know that that's coming. And as far as the time period is concerned, it's going to be set in the 32nd century. But a lot of folks were hoping it would be set in that lost era, which the Section 31 movie uh, is set on. So I'm very curious to see what folks are going to say. I'm going to, obviously, I think Sam and I are not going to say what our feelings are until until the end right because we got to keep like a hook right <laughs> like we're not we're not just going to give away what we think right so <laughs> i think those of you who know we know what i'll probably say but <laughs> but if you want to read out a poll and let people know what they can vote on yeah so what track do you want most there's legacy academy 31st century lost era section 31 and more strange new world so vote i'm gonna go oh, i'll vote uh, now and those are actual practical options i didn't go for what we could get i got for what we all have chances of getting um, i put in a bit of shatner there in the thumbnail because <clears throat> you know get him while you can they'd be ignoring him for the 20 years um get him while you can would be with my thought oh my god chuck a Hey, thank you so much. Hi, Samuel and Sohil. Great live stream in store. Yes, we've got a lot of fun going on. Uh, so tell us, so tell us in the uh, chat and also in the um, in the poll what you guys think. So, uh, Sam, let's talk about what's actually happening. First of all, how are you, what are your feelings about the Star Trek Academy show? Well, I I don't th- I think the fact that it never got created from six onwards started at six onwards showed that it's a it's not necessarily a niche show but it it you know part of why ds9 struggled to find its legs is that it wasn't an exploration show it wasn't a ship forward show an academy show by its very definition will be stuck on the ground um by the strict definition of the academy itself if you make an academy training ship that's a different show right but we don't know that would be more interesting you're gonna have struggle to make something truly star trek in the original gene concept because it, it you need to go out into space right now you could do an interesting soap opera style show but is that what people are going to want not everybody not a lot of people maybe so hmm maybe but it's confirmed future i knew it was going to be future as soon as they announced it because they've got the sets they got the costumes they can keep studios up in toronto um like it's obvious right that, that that's that's the kurtzman side of the trek side and you know if, if you've already designed the space station you're going to save yourself a million in, in pre-production costs might as well, and you can use anyone Discovery cast as guests. That's great. That makes sense. Do we want it? Uh-huh. See what the show is. Legacy. We'll see. That was always a fictitious show until it's not. Uh, what, was, what were the other options? Uh, Season 31. Well, that's the big surprise, of course, being Lost Era. Maybe like there's, there's, there's you know, that's a more complicated question. And uh, More Strange Worlds, yes. Keep commissioning. Exactly. So, so wait for section thirty. So, so sorry for going back to the academy show. Mm-hmm. D- is that a show that you were like hoping for, like all, all these years since Star Trek Six, or were you? Or is that something that wasn't really on your personal, uh, well, like I'd like this Star Trek series? Having written like thirty-seven Star Trek fan films, <laughs> having released like seventeen, um, I could write one that would work, but doesn't mean it would be, you know, what the studio wants, right? I would right. want one if it was right in the TNG era, like that academy with those uniforms. That would be my, because that's the most perfect balanced era for me, pre-war, post, whatever. That that for me would be golden. I'd want to see that. Or even uh, um, an anthology academy show, you know, you take one year and jump forward 50 years, right? Like the academy concept could be really great. It's when, you know, like do you want to be an academy show during the Dominion War? That'd be dark as hell, right? Do you want yeah, to be during TOS? Be- uh, it's not advanced enough, right? They'd, they'd, they'd throw in all these really weird, like, that's wrong for the era. Now, a future version is the most, most cost-effective. Um, depends on the cast. Depends on the story. 
right? I mean, if, if, if it's helping to fix the... We didn't even mention the post-Burn Federation in Season 4, which we're eager for. Cool. But, you know, mid, right? I, I would I'd rather have other shows than that show. Um, but it could be good. I hope it's cheap, at least, so it's not pulling resources away from Stranger Worlds or something. You know what I mean? Like, I hope it's not, like, not... It's not the tent pole I don't show, think it, but yeah, hmm. I don't think there's gonna be. Um, I don't think there's gonna be a um, uh, necessarily a um, kind of a resource problem because they share all the sets anyways. I feel like right. It's like kind of well, they share a lot of sets and they just redress them. I I thought I mean, Strange New Worlds I mean, used a lot of disco sets. I mean, they have their own fancy ones too, actually, because. You see them on, um, mm-hmm. you saw them at that Variety article, but, or maybe, I don't know, we'll I mean, see. Yeah, Although yeah. they've built this gigantic, the biggest ever for a Star Trek TV series set, which is the whole, like, I guess, you know, Academy, um, like, promenade or whatever, along with uh, a view of the Golden Gate Bridge. So that's going to be interesting. I mean, that would make would make sense to have the outside bit rather than, rather than going, you know, flying to LA to film there. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I would happily see scenes on a picnic bench in Academy grounds. For the Academy show, it's not one that I was like a hundred percent like gunning for, but I'm actually pretty excited that it's coming Fasty. because there's a lot of possibilities, and I do think that something that we didn't get to see a lot of in Discovery because it's so focused on the Discovery and really the but, you know um, the court, yeah, and, and the court they've kind of you know expanded out, but yeah, exactly. Um, we didn't, we don't see a lot of like shit, other ships and like other cultures and things like that. Other than the Navarre, that was kind of new ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm hoping through Academy, we do get to really deep dive into the 32nd century and see more ships. Like th- we're going to have to see like cadets first warp trips and like things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a possibility that we'll even see, uh, you know, other ships like, you know, the intrepid of the future or mm-hmm. Voyager J. What did it, what was it? Voyager yep, J, J. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of, a uh, lot of possibilities there and I'm excited about that. But we've said well. possibilities in every show. It depends what story they want to tell. You, it would be very bizarre to have Fate of the Galaxy stuff at the Academy. Very weird. I mean, you could have a, you know, a, a, like a, a sabotage subplot, fine. But I kind of want it to be the most low key. But then you get into teen drama stuff. But you don't want to. You don't want to JJ oh nine it where cadet becomes captain, where that one officer is already captain material because script, right? I have a feeling, yeah. I have a feeling to be they're going to go the ensemble route with this. But you know what's exciting is that any person who's ever been in Star Trek can, can come back as a hollow teacher, a hollow that instructor. I was going to bring up. That's the, fan, <laughs> that's the fanness of it. That That is the only show where that becomes unlimited potential. Because you could even argue that, you know, they could be living holograms, you know, with mobile emitters a la even more future. So you could actually have them as actually full characters with sentience and not even bat eyelid. Because they're just, like, why wouldn't you bring back hollow... Rob Picardo, literally, you know, like th- that. That's exciting. Although then, obviously, some fans say, "Well, do your own show. Don't base off old characters." But it's the one show that you can bring back anybody and not matter because they're not really them. Yeah. But they still can be them. Yeah, exactly. It's an uh, interesting concept. Hey, we got another super chat from Sean O'Sullivan, and uh, I don't know the answer to this one either. Gosh, <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna have to answer this one. What three words did Tom and Will Riker use for Defiant? Baby? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's, it's, it's obvious. It's of uh, course, Tough Little Ship. <laughs> tough Little Ship. So I just rewatched Defiant. Obviously, it's my film that's based on Defiant. And yes, it's, it's, a, it's funny you forget that's a reference, but it is. They, they did a good job with that. Uh, but but <laughs> Academy, little. yeah, it's... Uh, it entirely depends on what they want to do. You know, um, in the olden days, it's expensive to have makeup, alien makeup. It would be a sort of a nightmare if over three quarters of the cast were all aliens, because then you're like every day, everyone's makeuping. The budget is going to skyrocket because you can't you can't go back from that, right? But these casts were aliens. If you go full human, that's boring but relatable. You don't want to go. Kinesh! <laughs> you can't do that either because that's going to ruin that's it. That's a really so, good. Uh, that's. A really I'm mildly good. famous, my Kalesh. Yeah, I did, I did it for Shazad every time I see him. Um, Track so you on the tube of... does a really good one too. Shout out to Track on the tube. <laughs> What's nice about now for an Academy show is that the modern shows, Picard and Strange Worlds, have already done successful 
post Discovery Season 1 and 2 modernised versions of makeup. They've got Herogen makeup in stock done. They've got um, proper Klingons. They've got a nice variety of makeups that now they can utilise without having to bring Neville Page and say, let's re re redesign the future. And we've got, like, the makeup process has been done and people like them, right? Like, you've got a tremendous Tellarite in Season Stranger Worlds. Like, just go to. Like, just do that guy, right? Perfect. So, a lot of that work has already been done. That's why I think that era works, because they can just throw that stuff, like, oh, we'll just ship stuff from the, the Picard art department, right? Like, great, we can use stuff. We got another super chat from Ray Ricks, and Ray says, I feel a seven-led legacy series would be good as long as it doesn't just turn into a here's the children of famous Strafleet officers show. I agree. I tend to agree with that. That raises the question: If you if you if there is only ten million dollars, are you commissioning Legacy or Academy? <laughs> one show to rule them all. Uh, one show to rule them all. Uh, you know, uh, there's also, like you said, the twenty kind of twenty second century. There's the tw- well. There's also now the lost era, the twenty third century, uh, post. Sorry, post uh, Star Trek VI era, which we're getting a little glimpse of, it looks like, in Section 31. Possibly. Now, uh, Raj in the chat had suggested that um, it would be neat to have that. Sorry, that was Raj who suggested that, not you. (laughs) The beginning of the Federation. (laughs) That's the Archer. uh, Like, if Archer was kind of doing that. I would love... That's one I hadn't clocked uh for this discussion but it would be nice to get like i like the idea that they're doing these movies because not everything can I've work been pitching as a that for years yeah give them five yeah. million make a nice cheap tv movie but stream movie perfect i've been doing yeah it for years. and it could even be a limited series like three episodes that are an hour and 90 minutes series, long yeah. or something sure. like that yeah you know something like that an hour and 30 minutes is what i meant we'll <laughs> just say we'll just make that we're making a made for tv movie trilogy mini series yeah exactly trilogy <laughs> Now, about Legacy, I, I see this a lot, and I kind of wonder what your thoughts are on, are on this idea. But, like, you know, uh, there's there's the crew, there's the a whole bunch of folks that are saying Legacy is not going to happen until Strange New Worlds ends because we don't want two shows set on the Enterprise. Now, it's not a matter of, like, are fans going to get confused or anything, but I do agree that there's a little bit of a – I kind of like like my Enterprise being precious, like not seeing it, like, all over the place. You know what I mean? I don't know how they could do it because I feel like there's a specific kind of thing you're expecting on a show set on the Enterprise. And so I'm happy to wait kind of. I would love a show set on Enterprise G, but I kind of would like to wait until, you know, maybe Strange New Worlds is done and then we launch another Enterprise show. What do you think? Do you think it should be have your cake and eat it too? Or do you think do you like that idea of like well, let's uh let's spread the joy out a little bit? Well, Stranger Worlds is a genuinely good show. And they try really hard, even if they're if they're still a discovery spin-off, being art design is still locked into that, but closer. But, you know, they're a great cast, better than they should have been, better than they could have been, right? So to say either hurry up and finish, let's get legacy or keep going for 10 more years and no, then, no, and then keep seven going will be 70 for... in gray hair. Like, I don't, like, neither are good options yeah. to me because you want these actors when they're young, when they're younger because A, they're more physically fit, B, they can do longer hours. I mean, Patrick can only do like three hours a day by the end of season three. And, you know, it was a, a bitch to work with in the terms I... of like, time. You know. I don't think any show in the modern era is going to go streaming for 10 seasons anymore i think we're gonna be lucky ah, if we but, buy, but well, you can go 10 years and only a few seasons discovery is at seven years oh, okay. with only five seasons so it's that's not a good it's, point it's i not, didn't it's think not, about that again like, that's why they, that's why they now tell we had more years of enterprise yeah because you took long to make them enterprise had four times another episode in four years like it's a, it's a silly metric it, it, so you know it might take seven years to do four you know seven seasons or it might take 10 years to do well, six ta- seasons yeah but I'm talking seasons, and you're right. Uh, Disco did take seven years, but I feel like the pandemic kind of threw everything off. And oh, sure. So it might have, yeah, yeah. But, you know. Uh-huh. But that's just I'm but, saying, like, it, it, it's not saying 10 seasons, it's saying 10 years. Um, yeah. But the fact is, it's not even about the cast, it's about Terry, because he's the mastermind that kept most of the time on a straight and narrow. You know, some decisions he made, people don't like a lot that he did, he did you know, did. But he's going to be. You know, the time is to get him straight away, of course, and then give him more money. Because if he'd had the season one budget of Picard, he would have done a better show. 
Like season three of the lowest budget by a good margin. And yet, you know, imagine if you had season one budget, they just you know. Um No, I think I think two enterprises is fine because they're so different in tone, in era, in cast. Of course, you know, male-led show, female-led show. I, I, it, it's odd to say the audience isn't smart enough to get two enterprises. And one's a visual reboot, one's a prime timeline. Yeah, for I don't canon. think it's a matter of, like, smart yeah. enough or whatever. It's just a matter of, like, for me personally, it's like there's so much Star Trek on right now, and I like to watch everything, and I feel Is like there, it's spreading. Like... Yeah, I We're feel like... We're down to one show it's... a year. Are we? Oh, yeah, shit. Strange Worlds next year. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get Prodigy this year. We've got one... I guess I'm still... I guess yeah. I'm still like in the like when we had like you know basically five shows running. That's where my mind said it. But it's a good point. You raise uh, very good points. They could We're probably... lucky to have three strike, which is amazing. Three three in one year, amazing. But yeah, Academy and Strange Worlds next year. We should get Station Two on this year if they rush it through. Probably at the end of the year, Prodigy at some point. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, that, that time is now over, so it can now be quantity or quality over quantity. But you know. You, it's it's yeah it's tricky because each show has each show has merit right each idea has merit but obviously the streaming wars have come and gone and everyone's kind of everyone's hurting because they over over overspent in the pandemic to try and get something and they all failed in some way except disney but then i raised mm-hmm. their price so it's like even we they say ha we did so well <laughs> that reminds me i gotta go switch my youtube uh premium from apple to youtube directly because they're like charging way more if you're on apple uh steven fathery of text uh also gave us a super chat thank you so much and uh steven wants to know i am very excited or wants to say i'm very excited for possible lost era stories maybe we can get two long treks a year (laughs) first contact day and star trek day I, yeah, I like that. I get long tracks. That's funny. That's what we should call them. <laughs> and I, I and also, well, we can talk about that. I'm sure we're going to dip in and out, but make sure we get everything while you're here. Yeah, the Garrett thing was the big. Span in the works is wrong. It, like, it sounds bad, but it was a span in all of our works. Um, now, and I, I had a Twitter debate with somebody about this. I said, oh, wow, that means it's, it's, it's mid Lost Era. Which it is, right? Because. Six to TNG, more in the middle, and he's yeah. like, "No, it's it's, it's uh, because he thought Lost Era was started six uh, six to C or something." I'm like, "No, it's just from Twok to it, like the red the red uniform is Lost it's Era." It's eighty years basically you have to play yeah. with, it's, right? It's just before it, it's just for Stargazer and just after the the whites of TMP. So it's it's, a, it's the longest era, and she's literally thirty years into one. Um, but the big question is, and this is a good question to you actually. As I've made this a few times with people already, already in a few days, <laughs> is it such that this movie, not show, is better that it maintains a time travel element, meaning she jumps back to wherever and then continues, which means you can grab Garrett from whenever that becomes a plot point, or is it, what was his name, Je- not Jeff, but you know the guy, the guy, the Guardian guy drops her off. And oh, then, Carl. <laughs> and then removing that from the equation, because what's more interesting? Because the idea of pulling Garrett from some other time. That that's that changes the game. It could then be anywhere, grabbing her, or are we locking into no time travel in that in that movie, and then it is lost era, which means they have to respect visual canon or have minor minor riots. What do you think? Do you want time travel to be an element, because they're by time travel, or do you want it to be ignored as as not not progressed? What do you think? It'd be neat if Section Thirty One uh, does have time travel stuff going on, because then you could kind of fulfill that anthology idea that you know, where you're like hopping around from place to place. But as far as what I would like to see is now that I understand Garrett's in it is locked steady in the time frame. That's, that's personally what I would like to see uh, in the, in the movie. Also, it makes sense because Giorgio is supposed to be near where she left so that she doesn't get scrambled or although you know, whatever near is relative for a time entity right ah, yeah but years. 900 years yeah. versus like you know what what it would be like 30 you know yeah. how how long would it be yeah 30 years i think that's like a little bit better yeah <laughs> than, 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 for her yeah. for her condition quote unquote but it could be neat that if the it, it could be neat if in the movie she starts out there, but she's like, no, I'm in the wrong place. But then she makes the best of it, finds Section 31. I don't know, something like that. Or who knows? Now, when does the temporal investigation uh, come into play? Like, do they? when are they chartered or whatever? Well, that's the problem. The many, many books, but also ignore all the books, right? 
because that like you can't like section 31 didn't exist in nx until nx decided it did right it was meant to be ds9 era that was meant to be like like it's not new but like it was not old and then made it very very old so until they say it right uh, my expectation was always it was post TOS. Like there's some vague temporal. There's probably time travel somewhere. Then post TOS, when we start to do things and I save the galaxy, then there becomes a thing to, to watch it. And then by the future, we can modify the modify time. And then obviously, Discovery yeah. undoes that, as a, which is which is fine. It's the mega future. But the problem with time travel as a, as a base concept for a show is that it removes the idea of stakes. You know, it makes them all medium rare or even charcoal. Um, <laughs> You know, because if, if you know... Unless you do it like 12 Monkeys... I know I always talk about 12 Monkeys, brilliant show, but unless you do it something like that, where you see mm. where it's really deep into the time travel, I Well, think. they've never done good time travel and discovery, like properly logical time travel. They just sort of go into the future, ignore it, and let's talk about season two time travel. It's broken beyond belief. But if they introduce time travel as a... They, as, as such that one can do that, then any single problem that ever happens in Trek from that early period onwards, like, why don't they fix it? Now, yes, of course, relativity has the same issue, but they're so far in the future, they can conceive of why they shouldn't do it. Um, it, 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 you know what I mean? It, I like that. It, I like the idea that they'll, the film will start on a scene, a real present day scene, and then do a flashback of she arrives in the past, and then you know, like like structure it that way. But she's locked in that era. Because um, if mm-hmm. you give Section yeah. Thirty One time travel, like, do you really think Sloane had access to time travel? If he did, would really the many more happened? You know what mm. I mean? Really? Does that not break mm-hmm. the idea of any, yeah. everything? So you, yeah, but Discovery yeah. doesn't care about that. They do their own thing, whatever, right? They do Red Angel. They do have time travel. Red Angel suit. Blah 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 blah. Ignore it, whatever. It's tricky. So if you, because if you disclude time travel, then you're at the Khan era. You have to make the monster maroons. You have to have those level of blinkies and greeblies and stuff. And there's no, <laughs> and they're not gonna do it. They're gonna mess it up because they it's that team, right? Right. A lot of folks are. I saw a lot of folks uh, speculating that they were going to do the uniforms and the kind of designs based off of the Strange New Worlds uh, Monster Maroon. We didn't, of course, we didn't see what that looked like. Um, You know, at this point, I don't really care anymore. I used to get like really bent out of shape about it, but now it's, as far as I'm concerned, Enterprise kind of already like broke that and Discovery like just you know hammered down on it when they were in the you know in the in the TOS era. So I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. I, d- I no longer track visual continuity because it's already, it's no longer important in Star Trek. You know, well, it is you, some shows. Say, it is a Prodigy, Low Decks, and Picard. It was not Discovery, Stranger World. And I mean, it's, it, it, it's a chasm of different teams. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Because Lower Decks is meticulous. But how do you explain that canon. in universe without like all these complicated, you know, things? You just have to kind of decide okay the the you know like i know this this can go on for hours we do have some more super chats so let me get okay. <laughs> let me get to those so uh father from text track uh says if terry is busy on something else they could still do a post picard okay. story s- still do post picard stories with someone else i'd love Kristen Beyer to helm a captain seven show or movie that's true i mean terry metallis could go on to another project i hope he does get the legacy thing since it's his baby and since he kind of you know like put that out that intention out that like oh i want to do this but if not it would be great just to stay in that era it would be pretty cool and i definitely think we need to follow up with seven of nine and rafi and and the whole gang and bring back elnor and bring back you know maybe even uh time, through time travel shenanigans go back and see uh rios as well so who knows um the next super chat thank you guys by the way for all these super chats it's so nice um i wouldn't uh from ray ricks <clears throat> I wouldn't want Legacy three, four years down the line. I think the push for Legacy comes as there were aspects of Picard season three that people liked, mm-hmm. and a new show down mm-hmm. the line may not maintain those elements. Yep. Well, indeed. Well, it's like saying, imagine if you had TNG season one to seven, and then a five-year break, and then a new team made Generations of First Contact. It wouldn't be the same thing. In fact, the same exact team just continued making TNG bigger scale. That's what gave it the charm and continuation. So the longer you wait, the less likely, because it's not the same people. Of course, you can bring you know TOS to TNG. They Gene brought back the original gang. You can do it, of course. But the landscape's not the same um, as in the olden days. Indeed. Tricky, tricky. It is very tricky. <laughs> what about... Um... 
what about where what about let's see damn i'm still stuck now now i'm thinking like do i want this or do i want that i still don't have an answer because it's all about the the money of it the, the irony is yeah. they know of course they know bringing in a legacy show with characters that we know will generate more money and interest i mean picard season three was the only show that was properly mainstream news along with strange new worlds they were top of the charts for a while but i mean too, right? news that, articles yeah i mean yeah, they, yeah exactly that, that broke, well, yeah. like actual mainstream news there was the proper news sites report like variety about just plot points strange world people like it but it's it's still a trek show so people care about that level of wow i brought back like if Whoopi goldberg came back in a proper hero as a lead like these things will generate interest the other shows do not so it's a money maker but that's not what they want to do because they want, you know, Discovery Team want to do their own thing, and so that which is fine for a franchise, right? Charting a new course, um, I, you know, I like a lot of the cast in season three and four of, of Discovery. You know, the president and obviously Vance is like the best admiral ever, right? Like, cool, made yeah. some really good characters, and that's what longevity is. You know, if you have a cast that are in their forties, they can keep making stuff in the future. If you have a cast in their seventies, eighties, nineties, it's kind of harder. So that makes sense. But also, you'll lose these cast when you lose them. You know, now is the best time. We got Picard does amazing to to do something. I mean, Lavar and, and Michael Dorn look amazing still, and etc. And they all want to come back. They all, they all do yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. They all really want to come back. So but that is also like... on Terry. It's him and his 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 logic. He doesn't just come back because Michael Dorn's turned down many offers to come back because either money, role, or whatever. It's like he right. uh, he got them, and he's a you know, um, it, it's very special what they did there. Uh, oh, it is it's tricky. It's very <laughs> it is tricky. OMG, thank you, classic for real. Uh I just want a super chat for Starfleet Void. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> I agree so with that. On the next on the next drunk yards that'll <laughs> uh that'll pay for a couple of shots. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, see, so we have a five dollar drink, see. you're a fifty cent drink. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Uh, but I but I do think and and you know, Stranger World, good show, keep it going. Uh Academy it's going to be all unknowns, therefore cheap show, because obviously every Discovery cast costs more each year. So, cool, cheap show. The movie idea is brilliant. As I've been saying it since since Time Memoriam. Three million, four million, you know, two episodes worth, three episodes worth of budget. You'll see shooting less, you use the LED wall, you've got two, you know where to get them, etc. Um, and you could do all of the shows worth of movies. And, I mean, God, they shot Section 31 in what? 80 days like that shows you how quick movies are <laughs> they, they really are like proper like yeah, yeah, cheap movies true. are cheap and quick so unlike patrick two years of picard with delays like you just burn straight through movies and they could shoot a legacy movie i mean they could do it they could do it indeed yeah, and, I'd, and i'd be happy well, how's that discovery poll? movie how's that poll doing by the way what's the results Ooh. so far I'd love to get six more votes, but yeah, that's a lot of votes in the short amount of time. What Trek do you want the most? And we've got quite a balanced audience because people do you know disagree with us quite a bit, which is which is great. S- Slam Dunk Legacy, sixty five percent. Lost Era, twenty percent. More Strange Worlds, fourteen percent. And Academy, one percent. Oh wow! One percent is very rare on these polls. So one percent voted that out of all of them. And that test tends to be the reaction from most people. Academy is like, okay. I'll take it. But what's it really... Yeah. <laughs> like, but also you can't true. judge it negatively until you see it. Because it thinks if it yeah, is melodrama the show, people are going to switch off so quickly. Like, just From just the Variety instantly. article, it looked like it was going to be targeted towards like a teenage audience, though, from what I got from reading but the Variety article. they said Prodigy was tied to a kid's audience, and it's a better show than that. So that, unfortunately, that's actually bad marketing. Like, just say, you know, it's it's a younger younger audience. A show, younger audience. Just, you know, un, under 16, <laughs> you know. Because um, Prodigy is shockingly mature for, for a kid's show. It really isn't. So if this is a teen show, that implies sex, drugs, rock and roll, drama, stupidity. <laughs> it does actually. Now, it, it can be great. Actually... <laughs> it can be great. Like, I love Gossip Girl. It has a tremendous show because it's got a great premise as well. I'm trying um, to think of what teen shows I watch. I don't think I watch any teen shows. Yeah. Did you have any when you were a teen? <laughs> yeah, of course. We had Dawson's Creek. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was like a big teen show. And they were we not teens. Had, like, they filmed it. They were I not. feel like, 
Yeah, I feel like what's it called? Uh, Smallville was like a teen show, right? Like based young essentially. That's not quite young adult. Okay. Yeah, I, oh, CW okay. tends to be young adult. Teen is a little bit younger. I would want uh, if they're gonna do younger, I'd want it to be a young adult audience because I don't want to like just be watching melodrama every week. As an adult, I kind of don't. Well, and that's oh well, well um, and that's where something like the flash season one season one particular right. was it was young adult but it was good sci-fi as well it became more about the melodramas went on and then people clicked off and the, the you know the ratings went down respectively um so it oh, all yeah, depends beverly hills 902 went out in ron Tarek and the audience mm-hmm. yes i used to watch that too for sure sorry sam what were you saying so that's the thing it entirely depends what they're going for you know because if they know, and so we might, if I was doing that era, I said it for Legacy as well, or, or, or Picard season three, if each episode they brought back a Legacy actor and made that a guest professor and linked the show around their experiences, so we have our cast with a Legacy doing a story from, together, on, or even on some of the ship, sometimes not, you'd have such a unique perspective. It's a learning show, a history show, like in universe history, and a guest of the week, and most Trek episodes are very good, so, you know, Wolf coming in for a guest episode would be a great Klingon episode, right? Like, likelihood is it would be a great Klingon episode. Um, but if it's just people talking in rooms about I really fancy Sandra, you know, they can only make once every ten years. Yeah, I know, but we're going to break that, you know, it's like, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, so if Paramount's looking at, you know, these numbers and stuff, or, you know, the powers that be at Paramount or whatever, are looking at these numbers, and they're seeing the excitement around uh picard season three what do you think is really holding legacy back is it the fact that like they would want to base the production in la and that's much more expensive so they have to like really you know or do you, what do you think is going on behind the scenes as a speculation ego yeah because if 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 you think you if you if you as the person in charge of trek if you have an idea you love and you're ready to sink, you know, 30 million in, you know, you've only got 60 million in the, in the bank, and you're already like, I want to click, I want, this would be great for me, I love this idea. And then the fan base says, we want this, and you're like, oh, I literally can't do all three ideas, but I want, I want to do my idea. They just say, well, I, I want to do my idea. Because at the end of the day, it's, the, it's you know, um, if you don't like a certain concept, I mean, writers and showrunners can entirely strip, I mean, you know, TNG season one didn't mention TOS, basically. That was one of the, the concepts, right? That was just a on, from on high. And that's a thing. So if they just don't want to make a different idea, which is fine, but there's only so much money. How, many, how much debt can you do? Do you yeah. think that Discovery is a lot more popular than like the uh, kind of noise on Twitter lets people believe and that maybe, maybe they made a decision based more on that rather than than just ego because i don't know like i feel like that would be something if the ego thing was there i feel like we'd hear about it and i never hear any problems i feel like well, no, but it's the, well, the top people. i don't it's like but... <laughs> do you hear kevin yeah. feige's personal opinions no he's no, at marvel you don't, really. it's so true. it's literally yeah, it's the true. top people because we know terry wants to do it we know it, it, i mean that like that, that level of top um and it's funny, I think Discovery is an odd one and that I think apathy is more the general vibe. People watch it because they want to. Like, like, like eh. There's no, there's no big gravitas before the last, for the last season. Even I think it's one of upper trajectory overall. And I, I don't... Yeah, it's definitely them. a show that I feel... I don't know about apathy, but it's definitely a show that I feel like gets a lot of strong opinions and, you know... So I think even those have people... gone away. I think it, it had the strong yeah. opinions and then those that left, left. Right. Like we, I we didn't do a single video on Discovery, but between the break, there's nothing to say. Like all the other treks, I don't even think about Discovery. It's just a show that exists. It's not leaving a mark. Oddly, it's, it's strange. It's, it's a strange. Well, after the controversy, right? Which is odd because season I really like season three as a, as a general show. Yeah, I think season three and four are the strongest of the of that show for sure. And and four, all they had to do was cut it down episode wise and, and don't pad it's like you had a pandemic you could have cut the show down and and like that was their mistake for making it too long without enough happening what was it it was more than 10 episodes i thought it was the shortest of the no it was 10 but they only had enough story uh, for but six. you thought they should have gotten eight eight episodes yeah i i don't know i they like padded think 10 massively. is 10 is already too small i want all my star treks well, they to have had 15 more story episodes then. like it just yeah yeah that was the big yeah, complaint nothing that uh, is you know. 
overall the complaint of all the Star Treks except for season three, I guess, yeah, uh, of Picard, is that they kind of write it as they go along. I didn't know this, but like it's not they're not fully. Oh, I don't know if that's true for Lower Decks and uh, no, Lower Decks and, and Prodigy. For Prodigy. Is, I think yeah. they seem to write the whole thing out. But I mean, just in general, like I was surprised that like. What do you mean you didn't know how you were going to end the the, end of the season? <laughs> like, yeah. well, that's the like... thing. You can sense, <laughs> you sense the other structure. Lower decks, he's got a multi-year plan and a season plan and an arc plan. You sense it. Every season's consistent and fresh. Prodigy, they'd all forty worked out in rough, and you feel it. Stranger Worlds, they have a season written before they go. They and you feel it. There's a there's no real rewrites in Stranger Worlds. It's solid. Picard and, and, and Discovery, you sense the oh no. Every year, the oh no, you feel it. Because it comes across in the writing. You know, famous famous thing, Patrick didn't know his character was dying until the week before. Bit of a big thing to change the script. And you wonder why Dakota Johnson's pissed at Madame Webb for changing the script after she signed on. It's like, <laughs> not, like you'd think, if you're signed to a concept, they change it. Like, well... I love Dakota Johnson's interview. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so good. If you we watch... got another super Ooh. chat. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. This time it's for... Actually, we got two from uh, Classic mm. For Real. He is Classic uh, For Reason. One... <laughs> Shout out to myself for actually liking Disco Season 1, to which I liked. I love Disco too. Um, I don't like Disco Season 1 as much as the other seasons, but yeah, I like Disco. And then Boo the Pandemic was another super chat. Keep keep those super chats coming. I love it. <laughs> and ask us all the, the hard questions in your super chats. We'll answer them. We're forced to answer them if it's a super we, chat. We are. <laughs> Legally obligated. We're, we're legally yeah. out. It's true. We're legally obligated. But, it, but it's um, amazing how little the pandemic affected Season 2 of Stranger Worlds. You didn't sense it at all. They did a and that's the difference in like they just they they had their shit together a bit more than discovery and i think you know oh and sean's letting us know there was 13 episodes in season four i didn't even realize that see i I like i like having lots Mm, of episodes i think every i miss the filler the quote-unquote filler episodes i miss yeah uh sam's checking Hmm. you sean get ready (laughs) yeah no i i I remember they i remember they lowered the order i thought it was for that i thought it was for that season oh god yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah but uh i think i think i miss these quote-unquote filler episodes i don't c- consider them filler episodes at all i think that's an opportunity to like further develop characters or tell you know like one-off stories or things like that which i think is so is missing i feel like so i think one of the problems that like maybe discovery has is it's just always so focused on one kind of thing like it should spread out a little bit we should have you know again this is something that like discovery seems to not you know seems to do a little differently than strange new worlds is doing which went back to like a kind of like an older formula if you will mm-hmm. but you know i think that like it would be nice to just go off on adventures with reese or with like you know detmer and things like that but actually go out on well, that's why we hoped that season four wasn't going to be a catastrophe storyline like i would have been so thrilled with season four to go just just being we've got dilithium again we can go bring life to federation worlds plot that's it. That would have been great. You know, give each character stuff to do. No, it wasn't a bad season, of course, just should have been shorter. Um, and I guess we got the Tarka book thing, which was kind of like an offshoot, but he's books kind of like not part of the, you know, I, I get it. Like, but it would have been got neat more to screen see... time than Reese and Bryce put together <laughs> for yeah, four years. True. Uh, who was it that went off with uh, Kovic to do a special project or something like that when they were all Tilly? going? No, Tilly went off to. Well, I know she did. I thought she had both. There was, that was uh, part of it. One of the bridge crew characters, I think the comms co- communications officer. Is that Reese or is that Bryce? I think it was the Asian guy. Uh, I always no. forget those two because they don't say them enough. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, I'm and I've met them both and I, I love them. Just They're before. really nice men. I really like them both, but unfortunately. <laughs> hey, Don Don Power Ranger. Nice to see you in the chat. And then Ray Ricks has posted another uh, super chat. Uh, I'm an anomaly. I thoroughly dislike Disco, yet have seen every episode. I think Legacy isn't happening because it doesn't fit Kurtzman's forward view. Um, that Ray, that buddy, kind though. of. I feel like there's a lot of folks who want to, who may not like a Star Trek show, but will watch anyways, so they understand the do. big story, like just to see what's going on in all of Star Trek. So that happens sometimes. But you know, that's the kind of thing, and they keep 
saying this and I agree with this 100%. There's like at this point now there's like a Star Trek for just about anyone. You don't have to watch them all. And I kind of agree that like Star Trek for f- over 50 years has kind of been able to it, it it was neat to see that chart that showed how many episodes, you know, there's like 900 stories or whatever of Star Trek and it's it's like all the other franchises really have to catch up a lot to get to the point where we already are at. Uh-huh. So at this point, I don't think the expectation that you have to watch everything is a reasonable expectation anymore. I mean, there's some folks like myself, we're completionists. I got to mm-hmm. see it all. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm working my way through Voyager, by the way. I'm almost done. <laughs> it's my one blind spot is Voyager. I'm almost done. I'm at season seven. But then I have to watch it again. Long story. I won't tell you why. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I, th- I think for those of us that, you know, there are those of us like, for example, I didn't really... I think if I were going to rank all the shows as good as Enterprise is, it's my least favorite of the Star Trek shows because I just am not interested in of that. Of the era. old or of everything now together? Yeah, of, of all of it. It goes at the bottom, I think. I mean, very like, short Trek, surely, would be lower. Yeah, sorry. Okay, very short. I forgot. But they are not. They don't count. They even said it. It's not canon. I don't have to count I know, it. Universally, that's the worst thing they've ever made. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Everyone hates it. Okay, them. I'll put very short Trek okay. there. <laughs> yeah. but yeah so but that said though enterprise season three is better than any season of discovery 100 percent. <laughs> yeah more episodes better yeah, story know. better characters better overall, development true yeah objectively I and think an that arc be true. yeah um, <laughs> but that's also like pit like you know tng has the best episodes overall if because there's like like four like truly like like golden era you know, every I metric is different. I a lot of people come at me and say DS9's got the best episodes overall. It's it's the greatest show. Well, name uh, name three of the best DS9 episodes. Well, I, mean, I can't. I haven't seen exactly. <laughs> and that's, I have fun with Stuart with this. He says, like, <laughs> DS9 is not a show you remember episodes of at a certain point. Like, seasons four, five, and, or five, six, and seven, you remember the storyline. Be damned if you said, right, what was, what was episode 16? If I give you a name... Yeah, well, no, because it's not about the yeah. episode; it's about the story, which is fine. It's about the story. It's the but then you're saying, kind of does thing. this 17 episode arc beat out two episodes of, DS- of TNG? Well, it's different versus the one offs of TNG are like so much more stratospherically co- good compared to DS 9s one offs for the most part. Of course, there's a, there's two or three famous ones, of course, but that everything has that. They had seven goddamn years. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, movies are a really good way forward. Um, but this is this is a bad time for for everyone in terms of money, and also you know streaming. How the hell do you make money in streaming? You know, especially if you're launching yeah. a platform like people, people. I mean, not so much in the UK because I guess not not. But how much money do you have to burn on streaming services? Do you want to have the nine services? No. So you know, those of us already on Paramount Plus or Netflix to, in the UK, or whatever. Like a new show isn't getting more money from us in the sense of like the ones adding. You know what I mean? Like it's it's an odd concept, the stream service. Isn't isn't Paramount Plus making some money with Yellowstone and shows like that, or or I don't know. How do they make money? I hear though? those. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess there's the. Is there an ads version of Paramount Plus? I forget. I, I pay know. for the no ads. I think so. Probably. Maybe there is an ads. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. Blu-rays, of course, aren't the same metric anymore that they used to be. Uh, well, I, I feel still, bad I about play. by the way I have all of the new Star Trek's on Blu-ray and it's so much nicer to watch them but I feel bad about watching them now on physical media because I'm like well I'm not I'm watching this on physical media and it's not getting a view or a count oh towards, that's interesting you know, uh, you know what I mean so now I, I start feeling yeah it's like that's I love what I'd rather watch on physical media but now I have a conundrum so like I'm definitely going to always own physical media because the other thing is they just willy-nilly decide oh we're not gonna have this show on, or a movie like they've done that before where it's like the home of everything star trek and then you're like looking for star trek 3 and it's not there for some reason because they've licensed it to hbo or whatever for the time being so it's it's kind of a tough landscape it's not an easy one to support even mm-hmm. when you are supporting it you know yeah and i said i say that as a, as a point i just love blu-rays for the the special features because you literally can't get anywhere else. That's the That's one That's another place. thing. I think streaming platforms would really benefit from doing that is including all the special features so that people ones. can watch. Doc- yeah. Like imagine if they had, you know, oh, for for, for, for for Parent Plus, we're adding a new William Shatner commentary track for every TOS episode. 
Oh my gosh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you, if you weren't subscribed, you're a TS fan, that's worth five bucks. First of all, promoted. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all, why aren't they doing it? Exactly. It's like they could add all this value and get people to continue. What you can't, It's all about pe- bringing people back for something, right? Like, not just getting mm-hmm. someone to subscribe for a few months and then unsubscribing when the show is on hiatus. Like, well, that's so why, why the not... weekly trek was their big was their big I say, discovery. Their big experiment can we keep people in, and they can, but it obviously removed excitement from every show because some mm-hmm. shows they were backing up back to back, and that's sad to both shows. You can't embrace the finale of one at the same time as the season opener of another. You just can't. It doesn't. Now, obviously, it's for us to watch everything, but then you then you know that some people aren't watching one show and they just stop for ten weeks. Like we had some people in the chat who just did not turn up for the ten weeks of discovery and came back for prod. You're, same thing for Stranger Worlds. It's, it's fascinating because we do everything, right? That's our perspective. But some people just, you know, just just come for their one show. Um, one I, show, I would, exactly. I would never imagine not watching everything. That feels odd to me. I can't imagine either, but I, also but I write it's, narratives. Not, it's not reasonable to expect everyone to uh, be that way. <laughs> but I also write narratives, so, like, that's why canon to me is very important because, uh, I was going to say it earlier, like, if I, was, if I was to show you a TNG film that I made... And they walked in with a Discovery 31st century phaser, and you said, mm, it doesn't matter, visual cannon is not important. And then they transported away using Transwalk transporters from JJ. Like, would you accept me doing that? Because, yeah, visual cannon doesn't matter. I'd be annoyed, but at, if your story was really good, I would look past it and just write you an email saying, Sam, what was up with that? <laughs> like, yeah. what, what are you, but, what are you but, doing? You and I would actually start to, the, the problem with it, and that's the problem I kind of had, is that because I'm always thinking ahead about, you know, what's going on, I would wonder, did, did they do that on purpose? Like, is there a reason for that? Like, because it's, because Star Trek has had such a strong visual continuity, it makes you wonder when it's off, what's going on. Like you wonder, I don't wonder anymore because I know now it's a, it's just a different philosophy that they're, they're just not different like teams. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. It's just different teams. But, but at one point it was all driving me crazy. Cause like, there's gotta be an explanation. They're going to do something. What are they going to do? You know, like, mm-hmm. and it distracts you from the show because when i go back and watch episodes of discovery again i catch so many things that are interesting that i didn't catch the other times because i was distracted by all the other things that you know and that's why i think the show got better when it went into the future because like i no longer had to think about that it was everything was just Mm -hmm. brand new and and like interesting and it's like my mind focused on other things but not everyone's like that you know so well yeah oh sorry but like is it it, you know we're never ever gonna have the zeitgeist of being during discovery season one at the time when the visceral anger was real because it was like oh really and now it's like eh they broke it who cares like like, we've got the klingons like whatever (laughs) like they're the one-off klingons move on right like it's it's such an interesting thing now uh time's passed yes what do people say so we got two more super chats. I love the super chats. People Threefold are very super. Path. It's true. They are very super. Threefold Path uh, gave us 10 pounds and says, I've had much more enjoyment with Star Trek since I stopped watching the shows I did not enjoy. Mm. I know I miss out on some of the context, but it allows me to really savor the stuff that I'm enjoying. Yeah, you can mm. manage your own experience with a show that you love. You don't have to get bent out of shape you can just not watch <laughs> like it's i mean you can get bent out of shape that's a perfectly reasonable thing when you love something so much but you can also just move on and just watch the stuff you love so that's a good but, positive attitude no, the, the problem like with that, that though is that irrespective of you're watching it they can still change canon with each show which means that something you might have loved can now be undone by another show like because you don't know about like, it <laughs> that, irrelevant picard season two made uh, picard's mom a suicide and ruined the episode of TNG. Like that's a retcon for all history, right? Like that's horrible. And doesn't matter what doesn't matter if you didn't where watch you saw it. His mama. Don't you think it to me it just put a different tinge on it? Like it made me think that. But it wasn't the what, intent of the original creators, and right? It's, and it's no, just Patrick true. being himself, which is not the character. Gene would have certainly <laughs> would have wanted that. Um, yeah. And it wasn't enough time anyway. It was just here's the end. But like like it doesn't matter what you think about the shows. They each change each other, and Anuko say eh. It's like the Gorn, right? Like it's like, oh, are they change the Gorn forever? Well, no, because Lodex doesn't want that. But it's like they, could, you know, they can be very important in just changing the universe. Um, and then, and then you can come back in five years later and say, oh, I guess that thing I loved for forty years, like I guess that's not. R- r- oh, okay, huh? Weird. Uh, Skel- Skeleton Strange New Worlds number one. 
I can't see your whole. Oh, number one fan uh, gave us five dollars and says, "Just getting introduced to Star Trek, mm. boy! Yay!" Ooh. Uh, what is SFB's ranking of all Star Trek shows? Well, I have done that practice. Uh, mm. I think I did it a year ago, so I have to kind of look. It changes, like kind of, it mm. kind of changes. Um, so right off the hype of of uh, season three, I said Star Trek. Star Trek Picard season three was the greatest, but I th- I think I have to go back to TNG as being the number one. Like to me, that's like my home base, my warm blanket. Even though I grew up as a kid watching TOS, TNG mm. happened during like my formidable kind of years, eleven to you know twenties, eighteen, whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So I feel like TNG always gets the number one slot just for me personally. But I'll have to go back and rank all the other ones. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I will try to do that this week. And uh, let mm-hmm. me know you're following me. Or just I'll look out for you if you're on Twitter. Or just let me know if you have a different uh, username so I can follow you back. Uh, and thank you for the super chat. Very cool. <laughs> it's a good question. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I do. I have to sit down and actually think about it because I, I haven't done it in like a while. What about you, Sam? Have you got a recent well, list? Well, when we did our uh, because we did rankings on actual seasons because we found them I in you know you take the good and the bad, right? Like seasons. Oh, nice. You like went even more detailed. Yeah, like, every single yeah. we did the new and old Trek and we ranked everything, and then did a, of that rank as well. So we kept really granular with why, and often it'd be like, well, because this season has fewer amazing episodes versus okay episodes versus because you had to be like well okay you know is is it like good question so 22 episodes right would you rather have 16 average and six good or 10 good five average and the rest are bad what do you what do you what do you what are you more excited about averageness or excel and bad what do you prefer if you had to pick excel really good and and average i wouldn't want that no, no, average. you have to have. If you're having uh, more yeah. good, oh. like, do you want more so average? more good, more more excellent is the one I'd go with. Because that's the thing. Like at a certain point, you realize average is average. It's fine, but the exceptional is exceptional, and we all accept stinkers in every season, right? Like uh, I'll take I'll take three bad ones to have four good ones, like properly good ones. You know, I'm fine with that. That's why more episodes help because you were able to have that. Things didn't quite work, um, but for me, I think TNG still overall just because characters story tone sets like overall it ticks every box in a way that other shows don't um i like voyager because I, I i prioritize personally science fiction stories tech aliens and ds1 has more characters less sci-fi st- i mean it has some but like it's not even comparable that's they're doing different things right um i just prefer story over character if i'm gonna pick one because i look i go for the the cool sci-fi and the aliens and you know that's more my bad. Absolutely. Uh, I can't believe it, but uh, yeah. Starfleet Command's calling me. I got to get going soon. Uh, but it was super fun being on, and and uh, I hope to be back again soon. Yeah, I mean, welcome to to, to, to say hi. Sometimes I'm you know I'm around. Maybe we can get you in for <laughs> a discovery. What the hell do you think of the first two episodes? <laughs> well, that'll be. Interesting. I can I can tell you that now, but I'll wait until it starts airing. <laughs> I got really? a sneak. I got a little sneak peek. Oh. So, <laughs> well, there you go. When it airs, then <laughs> right, we'll have a good second another live. Because although Pip, I can, Pip, I'll say this: is that live? Or is that biggest... pre-recorded? <laughs> uh, what's that? Is this thing doing pre-recorded or live? Oh, this. Oh, the thing we're doing next is not happening because the other host actually had a situation and they canceled. Oh. But tonight you can watch. Uh, Starfleet So Hail After Dark, or actually the After Dark show is what we're calling it. And so stay tuned on the Twitter for that. And then can I give a shout out to my friend Text Track? All, all right, text, out. watch Text Track also tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. I mean, sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern. So yes. check shout that out. Shout loud. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. And I'll, I'll, of course, always watch uh, Trek Yards. They're the, <laughs> yes, absolutely. They're your greatest. I, can I just say, I've been watching, tra- before anyone was doing like YouTube, I, I've been watching you guys a long time. So it's an honor to be here. I'm a fan and a friend. <laughs> I've done it a long time. This is... You've, you guys have been doing it a lot. It, how, do you know how many years? You don't even want to say. <laughs> Nine years, six months. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. I had someone say to me, I watched you when I was young. How young? 16. <laughs> it's like, oh, and they're like 24. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> well, shit. It happens. It happens. All right, good to see you. Thank you very much for sub again. You're a tremendous uh, breath of fresh air to Stuart's Canadianness. I uh, hope to see you soon. <laughs>
<laughs> all right. First of all, you See you Bye. later, guys. Special guest star, tremendous. Uh, but I am still here. Uh, and the amount of interaction you guys want to have is how long I will be here for. So if you have your comments, questions, thoughts, and whatnot, let me just get the net, uh, webcam. There I am in all my full resolution-y glory. And that is a Stargate-themed uh, background. So yes, that was a special guest star with us for the first hour. Uh, different opinions, which we like. Oh, that's going to be the front of my face, isn't it? Okay. So, yes, the poll obviously is a bit one-sided, to say the least, but that is A-OK. -okay. You guys have your own stance. I think the general fan base has expressed similar vibe. I'm going to have to stay in my very, very narrow box there. I'm going to have to stay where I am. Right, hello. Aussie, two doors. Long live the Queen Count Discovery. Yes! She doth queen it up. 10th uh, anniversary of Records is in October, but we're going to do stuff in... in um, yeah, anniversary is actually October, but the, we're going to celebrate in August in uh, in Vegas. Or is that September? Can't remember. So let's end the poll. 144 votes. Again, a stonking win. Uh, what track do you want most? 67% Legacy. 16% Lost Era, the new movie. 15% More Stranger Worlds. 2% Academy. 2%. Dear me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a... It's a I mean, obviously, the, the answer to the question, of course, is all. Well, all of the things. You know, why wouldn't you want more more Trek, especially if it's good. But, although there's so much money and budget, they just don't have the budget to give us lots of cool things. Movies are good, because they're cheaper, overall. Although it can easily uh, increase in, in budget, of course. Easy to, to mess up. But... Yes, Matthew, I did. I did uh, CG up age on the Shatner. So just started at 6 Shatner. Up aged because I'm a bit fancy like that. Yes, classic for real, it is. Yeah, now how do you all feel? And let's just go back to what we talked about earlier. And again, subject your thoughts, comments, and questions. Uh, our lives will end in the next sort of, 20 minutes, but your interaction will equate longer. We are here. Well, I'm here. Uh, Station 31, Lost Era, probably. Rachel Garrett, that's all we know. With an actress that seems like a, a fine choice. Rachel Garrett. Super underused in Trek. Um, a, 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 an Enterprise captain yet never mentioned. Goodness. You know, and a decent design if a bit bulky. It's a good ship. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's not given more love, more time. Because we know nothing about it. Obviously gives us a lot of flexibility in narrative. And if you're going to... Wait, we mentioned it earlier. About going for... Pick a legacy character and then utilise them to help jump off a new story. Rachel Garrett is is certainly in that line with the recast, so cheaper, obviously, and I don't think the actress is with us anymore. But Garrett is a good choice. The actress is looks looks to be in her twenties, probably in her thirties, um, which you'd think is Lieutenant Garrett. You hope Excelsior, although I guess it's not. I guess any ship's doable. Um, let's do. Uh, got a new. Whole idea. Okay. In the the new Lost Era, uh, or, or, uh, in the new Lost Era show, do you want for their uniforms 100% canon to walk uniforms? Uh, Strange World. If, uh, talk. Variant update or visually update totally new. Okay, let us know. I'm interested in that poll. Let us know what you think.
Ah, ah. Internet. Silly people. Silly people. Yeah, last time we think in the in the in the chat. Because of course, and I didn't mention it in our previous bit, but the rather common uniform in Stranger Worlds was a variant designed by the, the production team. They started with a concept that was just the Rathacon. They modified it by changing proportions uh, quite heavily, actually, when you, when you uh, fundamentally look at it. And it's an alternate universe, future version, with different timelines. So it's... N it, not to interfere with the, the poll too much. That should never be another version, because that's not a prime timeline main continuity one. It's always an alternate version with their wet shoulders. Very strange. Um... So that's that's should be its own thing, just like the emblem on uh, Kirk in the Ultimate Universe in the Khan-esque episode. Again, it's one off. But do we want to see um, a a new one? You know that uniform, of course, was a one off Ultimate Universe, but also gave you know often with with Star Trek's people comment that. Oh, it was cheap at the time. So at the time, none of those uniforms were really that cheap. They were trying to make good uniforms. Um, Rathacon was a very big, expensive uniform. Like, it's not cheap at all. People only say it's cheap now because it's not got giant texture and all those odd things of detail, but it, it does. All the, all the you know, It's a military uniform, right? It's meant to be sleek and simple. And who, who looks at Rathacon and thinks, those uniforms are cheap, but they really weren't. They really don't, you know, etc. So they're doing a full visual update. It, you know, it is condemning a movie budget as uniforms for being cheap, which seems odd to me, because at a certain point, movie movie uniforms are not cheap. I mean, costumes, you know, they were expensive for the time. Properly cheap costumes look properly cheap, but you know, if they weren't expensive, or weren't cheap, hmm. Phone the poll. But yes, we have not a band account, but for twenty four months, That's such a long time. Star Trek Academy can be the darker, sexier Trek we need. Well, we've had Dark Discovery Season 1, Dark Discovery Season 3, Dark Picard Season 1, Dark Picard Season 2. Do we need dark, more Dark? I mean, sexy is not in the world. They're young people. Why not? Uh, but yeah, Dark, trek, dark Sexy Trek is just BSG. Hmm. Hmm. We dumber Trek for sure in terms of the people who haven't got the experience to know better. That's a thing. But not band again. He gifted one membership over to Donny. Donny had a the classic Donny that we all know and love got a free membership. But Lucky says don't want Dark Shrek. Turns out it's done. I mean two and two and six are dark. They're great, right? Not a band says welcome back to Donny. Very nice. Uh, classic. Am I missing something? Or why do people keep bringing up the Captain Garrett section of Picard? Just too red or what? Well, she's in it. That's all. It's just a reference. Um, not banned a cow. Wouldn't the Lost Era uniform be 20%? Ish? Maybe. Uh, the irony, of course, being is that the Wrath of Khan uniform is the is it, the further away from the Wrath of Khan you get, uh, the less pieces they have and the worse they look, the more pieces they remove. So they're actually picking the worst looking uniform version in that era conceptually not they can't be other variants of uniforms of course but um it's a standard right so standard uniform legacy for sure i mean yeah i would take both that's the thing i would happily take a you know an academy show at a five hundred thousand dollar budget per episode keep it nice and affordable cheap the wrong word and uh, give a show that needs a bit more bang for the buck, more bang for the buck. Very happy with that. But, you know, as long as these things aren't rushed, as long as they have good ideas, as long as they have good reasons to exist, um, the Academy show wasn't done for so many years for various reasons. I wonder why. I wonder why. Mm. 
They bring it up because she's wearing her screen accurate uniform. Oh, okay. Although it is red, I mean, as in it's as in it's bright, bright red. You could. I mean, we don't get close enough to know. That's the problem when you have a an actual correct made asset, but you can't see it enough. What made in canon was what we saw, and you, you know, so you could easily argue, ah, we didn't, we didn't really see, we didn't really see that uniform enough to to make sure it's the the full final, etc. <laughs> yeah, but I've said before, if it was the lower decks of Prodigy guys doing Lost Era, I am sold. But the Discovery team, as in the offshoot of them, which makes me slightly more worried, etc. Um, does Discovery do cheap though? Yeah, Picard Season 3 was cheap. Relative. It lowered the budget massively for that. Raj. I mean, whichever. You know, the 30th, I thought it was the 31st. Uh, maybe the roll to the 32nd. We, we haven't talked about the 31st century in a while. I guess that was the right one. Um, because I think it's time for some... 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 Some, uh, some quick-fire Super Chat thoughts. Because you guys... You know, I've got no Stuart to bounce off of it. Uh, if you guys want me to, to bring anything up... This is the time. I think Stuart wants to talk about these topics a little bit more next week. Um, I can say we're only five bucks from a lovely goal, which would be tremendous. Very, very tremendous. Um, what do we really want? I mean, what would I, you know, I guess I've, I've written so many new Trek, so many new Trek things, so therefore, what I want is kind of, I'm doing some things I really, really want. What I would really want would be uh, actually some more animated stuff, because animation lets you bring back characters at an age that you think they should be. You know, Lodex and Prodigy. You know, Prodigy is a tremendous piece of artwork, and that they can do so much. You know, we we don't we don't quibble at Jamie sounding old, even though Kate Mulgrew looks and sounds older, or Beltran for what Aliga has so far. Um, I would love an animated, an extra one era Ronan War movie or show. Get the whole cast back. They would sound very similar. That'd be tremendous and cheap, apart from the cast. I would absolutely see a. I mean, I, I said about. When Discovery first came out, but if I was Paramount, I would pitch a, uh, a an anthology movie series or anthology season where each season or each movie you move forward a bit and you gave, say, we plan for seven movies or seven series or seven episodes, whatever. Each one was an era. Each one would have a through line but be standalone and lead into a, a story that takes place over, like, 400 years over the anthologiness of it. Kind of like, what if in Marvel they're all standalone but they link into something bigger? And you get to kind of live the dream. It's not practical because it's too expensive. Because even in animation, building all asset, new assets every time is horrendously expensive. Because it takes all of the time each episode. So I get it. But that's what I would do. I'd get Chatner back as a version of Kirk. Obviously, I'd, I'd commission something very soon to have Kirk back in some form while he can um, advance. Yeah, I saw 31st, whatever, 32nd century. Yeah, I mean, those things are, you know, that I would do. Enterprise G is, is, is variable, you know, it, it, you know. Do I need to see something like that? No. Well, I'd like to, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Again, variable. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll watch anything if it's good. You know. That's important. Hey, Matthew got us past the finishing line of that. Amazing. You should try. <laughs> See, I like people that know my Trek shorts. Matthew DeFridis, $5. Thanks so much. You should do a Trek short with Keely during Sacrifice of Angels. Put it in one of those little fight. Oh, God. Oh. One of the Peregrines? Jesus, Matthew. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I've been avoiding doing DS9 films not avoiding, but it's not been impractical for a long time because I haven't had the sets. We've now, as you saw from my last fan film, built the sets in various degrees. So we certainly have more DS9 plans uh, ready to go. Um, but those things are obviously quite giant. Keeley's the, the, the second or third, I think she's third, in charge of Helms. Therefore, you know, it's a case of if you see Dax at Helm, what else is Keeley doing? 
but certainly they wouldn't put them in the fighters because a that's not her purview and b they'd get shot and destroyed so it's a case of what is she doing somewhere else uh but yeah i mean i i certainly have got intentions in the vague sense if you guys support indiegogos etc um which help me do these things to to make more recreations you know it would be fun with my digi doubles i can do stuff um on sets that feel still broad and whatever yeah it depends if you guys can support the indiegogos because you know these things take the budget but it's so fun to do this nine content it's a uh, it, it's complicated in a good way uh and I'd love to, you know, you saw in the last film we had the Runabout Bay. That was a quick version. We have a full version of it textured. But it'd be very, very cool to do, you know, imagine sequences in the Runabout Bay. Like next to a Runabout, stuff they could never do at the time or, or never would want to do is too annoying expensive. So, uh, you know, that'd be fun. That'd be fun for me. Uh, three, four, path, five pounds. Thank you, guys. Past the finish line. Amazing. I really hope that they make the most of the actors they have before they are gone. Yes, that is for me a big deal. And Bill could definitely still play Kirk. Did you see him in Kimmel? I did. It was okay. It was a it was a gimmick, but it was a good gimmick. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. This is the time. I don't I don't know if we as the 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 uh the I don't know how I don't know if 20 years ago, the idea of having this many bring back the past was as much of a thing. I think people relied on their own good ideas. <laughs> now there's a that say less. So now you expect old actors to return in a way that you wouldn't have 20 years ago. So therefore, you know, I mean, look at Picard, look at all these things. They're being led by old actors, etc. Classic for real. What fighters are smaller than peregrines? What? Well, well, uh, probably the, well, the the pods in best of both worlds, but uh, are they fighters or are they just attack pods? I can't remember what they were referenced as. Raj, what stories would you like to see in Starfleet Academy and other future Trek series movies at me? Yes. If it's, like, if it's th the future, I'd love to deal with the... Uh, oh God, Zindi? What happened to them? be great um, I mean any any honestly any Temple Cold War have a sphere builder race appear post the war and be part of the academy and be like we're so sorry we tried to destroy the universe it's okay guys it's okay that would be interesting uh, more Trill stuff dealing with symbionts and then you could bring back memories of people from the past would be interesting go the Gamma Quadrant in some meaningful way, see Changeling, and these are all things from the past, but we're looking at continuing threads. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, the universe is broad for a reason, right? I can invent anything on the go, but then, will it hit? I don't know. Uh, Matthew, how do you get around the name, image likeness of copyright issues with the CG of Riker. Well, it's not Riker. It's the CG of Riker. Um, it, you know, isn't it? It's like, it's not close enough. Like, I'm not... It's just, it's just a CG model of Riker. You know, it's not particularly... It's not particularly close. It is, but it isn't. You know? I mean, it's a fan film. I mean, you know, the, the likeness of Riker is no different to the likes of the Defiant in terms of, like, it's all well, the uniform, right? It's all owned by them and I give them credit in every film as to they own the rights to everything I do. Well, hey! What if Shatner is old Kelvin Timeline Kirk? That would be fun, but wasted. As in, if your last chance to play Kirk is a non-Kirk, James T. We know character, then that's sad. But also, as an actor, that'd be great. Cause he gets to be him, but not him. How's he to still who Kirk is without actually, um, you know, being the the dead one, etc., <laughs> etc. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, three pole path again. Bring us even further. Uh, I mean, hey guys, I'll be honest. Nine more dollars, and we are good for the day. Like, I'm happy to to eight more, seven more dollars. We're happy to end for the day. That'd be a tremendous um, figure. That'd be really, uh, really tremendous. You guys are phenomenal as always. You are. Uh, three pole path. My issue with Academy is I want characters learning and not the best at everything right away. 
I'm not sure that's how they'd want to do it. I know, I was I was hinting that earlier with the idea of, yeah, like these have got to be dumb in the abstract. Not smart, but experience. Because, yes, you can argue Starfleet Academy is the best of the best, but if they were already best of the best and staff and starship ready, then you would not need the Academy, right? What are they learning if not how to become the Starfleet that we know and need? So... Which is, which is which is fine, and that you can bring in characters who have innate interests and loves for what they do, botany or astrophysics, and, and know stuff, right? Just just know. But then they'll make dumb choices interpersonally, or chain of command, or, um, you know, that, that sort of stuff uh, is interesting and fine. In the Trek context, who knows? At the end of the day, it becomes a human tale. You know, how is a human... In the thirty second or first century, super different to us now. Don't know. Although, of course, you can have you know a Breen or a Telluride or an Andorian who will have a different perspective, and that's that's fun. But then, you know, really, they would have worked out this whole drama thing between the alien races hundreds of years ago, and you look at how how different things have got than hundred years ago today that let alone then the future and adding future tech to that equation. You know. But linking stories would be good as always. And guys, vote in the poll. I've got six votes would be great. And yes, Jonesy07, one pound. First super chat, thank you. Let's all celebrate in our own way. Thank you. Now is that the you were born 07? Is that is that what the 07 implies? In which case, how old are you and how old am I? Because that that's like, oh no. This is how people feel when they Seventeen, okay. Oh dear. That's so weird. Oh. I'm still young at heart, it's fine. As I stare at my wardrobe full of Starfleet uniforms and my collection of Blu-rays and my Phaser over the, you know, classic freel. Nobody super chat. Sounds like a stream all day. Look, I'm not Captain America. I can't do this all day. Get it? Uh, but yeah, no, I think this is a, a bit interesting chat. I mean, my question to you all though is, is, is there really the one you really want? Because we know what, we know what. Uh, more Strange Worlds will be. We kind of know what Discovery Season 5 is going to be, or, or 6. We know tonally what a George Osh movie would be, dark, where she's just mean in a funny way, you know, uh, unless they radically change it in a direction. But let's say it's one of the Discovery directors who's a very good one, he does a good job, but like it's still their team making the movies. It's still a Discovery movie. Legacy, different when it comes to um, if it's not Terry and his team. But, you know, I've written so much Trek that I feel like I could write something good. You know, put me in, coach. I'd love to write something for official Trek. That's why I like Prodigy so much, because they really care about canon. They really care about the universe. They really care about doing something new. Why is he what's old? You know, that's that's... That's a really great balance because they're not. It's silly, but it's compared to, um, compared to. Uh, Lower decks, it's not very silly, right? That's a really great balance. That's just for me. Yes, classic for real. There are fighters in discovery, which also left from a room that was not big enough to hold them, so we just ignore them. They don't exist. They can't exist, and they don't have any reason to exist. Dan Ben Variety article says. Academy Cadets Shona Noga Landu describes them as kids who have never had a red alert before and who never had to operate a transporter or been in a phaser fight. All fair. You would not... Hope, well, you may have a phaser at your house, but you wouldn't phaser normally or transporter before Starfleet. That makes sense. That's all good. You'd know about them. They're, you know, It's like saying, oh, I've never driven a car before, but I'm not going to gawk at a car. So that's a fine line. Hmm. Hmm. Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Sam. Hi. Uh, I look forward to Legacy. 
happens. I've been interested in Academy if we're in the 25th century already. Yes, I would pick Voyage Era. Although the caveat with doing the Voyage Era is that everyone looks too old. But would we accept that as being okay? Just to get the era. I guess voiceovers, you'd get everyone back as voiceovers. Uh, I guess. But, um. I mean, really, the best would be Legacy Era, because everyone can be everyone can be in it, right? Uh, Jonesy, who did you did you say? If the O seven was your your you didn't okay. Looking forward to Discovery season five. Have zero expectations and have no idea what to expect. Going in blind, and hope for the best. Yeah, I'm expecting a a uh, Indiana Jones a thon, which should be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> like, it, you know, the trailers are very bland in their own way. It's odd. Uh, Raj, are you going to Basing Stoke? Don't know. I still don't know. I've I've done Stargate conventions uh, for 12 years. I've met everybody except Brad Wright, who I would like to meet. But I don't know, actually. I don't know why I don't know. It's a, it's a it's a odd one. Are you UK based, Raj, and, and want to go? Are gonna go? I hear good things about last year, but I had never heard of them before. Uh, Jonesy, this the one. Kaiser Free the Discovery Blob Pod Fighters. Yes. What what are they? The drones. They're not. Yeah. Vero Vero Invictus. That's still a great name. Two dollars. Thank you. And we're down four away from our next goal. Four. That's it. That's it. Ryder right, Caddy Well would be a lot of. Legacy is. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, if they write it well, great. I am absolutely rooting for it. Absolutely. Classic for real. I'm not saying that from a realism perspective. I mean, blood pods are. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It was, a, it, was a, it was a thing with a gun on, wasn't it? Matthew Lebner, an amazing admiral for 12 months. Still with a tremendous shot of the Enterprise that we did. Uh huh. Admiral Lebner. One of the things I love about Star Trek in the 50 plus years I've been watching is all the little moments, big and small, that go back to what I call the original ideas. Because in 3 did it well, no decks and projects selling it. Yeah, heart and soul. Heart and soul. That's what Trek is in, in the Stranger Worlds. Mostly gets it. Mostly get it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They try. Yep, that's why I say Brad. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not. It's not near where I am though. It's quite. Hmm. Uh, mm hmm. Yep. No, that's right. Vero. Yep. We can focus on what we want to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't want those writers to. I don't want those writers to, you know, write all track canon because that's a that's a, you know, that's a problem with doing prequels, sequels, and mid mid stories. Is that then you're writing the future, which breaks the past, and then you change the past because the new tech then breaks the future. It's, yeah, it's tricky. Uh, but guys, that is one hour and a half. We've two minutes left. Can we get another four dollars? And that will round out any final thought. Uh, as the poll is at 65 votes. Yeah, any any final thought anyone has? Um, because, yeah, what do you really want? I mean, everything, if it's good, let's be honest. If Discovery is amazing, we'd embrace it. Um, more, you know, keep Lower Deck seven seasons, Prodigy seven seasons, Stranger World seven seasons. Give them all seven. Give them all seven, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested, just make sure they're good. And don't keep damaging the cannon. Don't keep damaging the cannon. Please. Please. <laughs> Just do good cannon. That's not hard to ask. Well, yeah, lost it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, lost it sense for Klingon. No, no, it doesn't. Klingons are at peace with us at Lost Era. 
be someone else. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed, threefold. We'll cover on track yards and hope it's good. Matthew Lebner. Oh. Haha. <laughs> he forgot to add that if no one has seen the fan films that I make, uh, they ex uh, excel as well. Please give yourself a shout out. Yes, okay. Well, hey. Hi, I'm Sam McCockins and I do. Star Trek fan films, as long as as well as Trek Yards, where I cover all the eras ish. I didn't discover it yet, but uh, yeah, we do fan films with some pretty interesting characters in pretty interesting situations, um, and they are yeah, we've got some captains, got some lower ranks. They they have dig we have digital de aging and aging, so you can experience people that are actually fifty in their twenties and and feel genuine. Cause as in, I'm directing them to be different, so it's not just their face is younger, I'm, I'm making them act younger, which does, you you do need that. It's like, um, Indiana Jones, like, he sounds old, so they don't go so far, but they, you can, you know, higher pitched a bit, not that much, but, you know. Uh, and we've got more to go. We've got a giant project coming out this year, um, Prodigy themed, which is absolutely, oh my goodness. Um, and then, you know, we've done 17 films, I think we're at, something like that. Got loads more filmed, a shot, to be edited. Um, and if you want to support us, you can support us on Patreon at Trek Shorts. That is a extremely useful um, uh, thing to help us on. We do regular shorts, and and that absolutely keeps us going. Like not even, not even kidding. Uh, how much that keeps us going, both in just monthly, but also if a random cost comes up. You know, I mean, uh, you know, if, if you want to help out every, you know. Literally, if all 50 of you put in 10 right now, that would radically change the Patreon and, and just help us do films. Because we have, you know, as I've said before, we want to keep doing them. The cast love it. But everything costs budget. And I, you know, I can only do so much. Um, and I've done lots already. You know what I mean? You can only do so much for only so long. But the longer we go, the more sets we have, the more things we can do. So it's just about the backing to let us keep doing it because we're in a great place. Probably the best place of any... Trek fam studio to do a random DS9 story, a random TNG story, right? You know, this this is what we do here. So the Patreon is super important to let us do what we do. Um, and it's great. Like I said, five, if 50 of you gave five, that'd still be uh, wonderfully amazing. Um, I know we also have a couple of people who are, who are you know, fans, I mean, we're fans, but like fans who are, uh, who are working with us on some films to actually bring their vision to life, which is just amazing um and it's like we've made this buffet of things that you can do that then we get to help people live their dreams that's tremendous and um, we've got someone flying in actually from america in the uh yeah um yeah yeah, if you want to support us, please do. If you can't, that's okay. Keep watching them, showing them, enjoying. Um, but thanks, guys. You got us past the the red line, which you won't get the reference, but that's okay. I end the vote now with 69 votes in the Lost Era show. Do you want their uniforms to be canon, show draws variant, or visual updated? Stonking 80% what twock canon, 100%. 14% are happy with the Stranger Worlds variant. And 6%, which is what, one person? totally refresh and new tremendous thank you all for joining in thank you for Starfleet Boy uh, for being absolutely amazing uh, came in and subbed and, and, and did part of the conversation created a fun first hour with us and we hope everybody has a tremendous weekend Easter weekend uh, I am seeing Marie uh, tomorrow until Monday and then back to lives Tuesday onwards and Discovery of course on the 4th on Thursday so join us in for that uh, Stuart's first reaction on Thursday our full live on Friday so this is to this, to this tomorrow this time next week uh, which time zones will be returned to their normals everyone in the UK onwards which is a large chunk of the world back to the original normal time which is the rest of the year and then Americans and such will not move so join us in for the 9pm to 11pm GMT uh, then next week hopefully lots of good stuff for Discovery I guess it's a two-parter so that'd be a lot to talk about hope you're excited to some extent and uh, thank you everyone for super chatting being part of the conversation 
Um, thanks for being here. You guys are still busy in the chat talking. But, uh, yeah, and Captain Foley was off doing real life things, as he often does. And we love Stuart for that. All right, so until next time, he is Captain. He was Starfleet Boy, and he is Commander Coggins. And until then, thank you all for the rest of the evening, and uh, 